Today, we're gonna to be checking out three Five Nights at Freddy's animated horror stories. Here we go, man. As you guys know, I love me some FNAF. I Let's relax and check it out. The first day I ever went to Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. The name sounded dumb to me. Okay. But boy, did I have a change of heart once I stepped foot inside. The air smelled like pizza, and the only sound I ever heard was playtime. That, and of course, the music on the show stage. Kind of a vibe, kind of a vibe. The second I laid eyes on Freddy and his friends, I was in love. I don't know what it was about them, but I found them to be so magical. My friends and parents disagreed. They called the animatronics creepy and scary, but I couldn't see what they were seeing. Maybe my friends weren't so good, and maybe my parents didn't pay enough attention to me. But in my mind and in my heart, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and all their friends were my real family. That's a little weird. Quote unquote, more lifelike characters like Yellow Bonnie with employees inside helping to act out the show. Yeah, you couldn't pay me to get inside of the but suit. I always found the purely robotic friends to be more interesting. Unfortunately, my parents weren't exactly the richest people, so I didn't get to go nearly as much as I wanted. When I did get to go, I was the happiest kid on the planet. Wow. I liked the games. Bro's got a pizza, major obsession. The real draw for me was always the magic on the stage. Understandably, I was dying to know more about how it all worked, but I had no idea how it would be able to satisfy my curiosity until one day I saw him. It was after one of the last shows of the day had ended. Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica were still standing on stage but their suit friends had left. I was finishing my soda, about to go to the bathroom, when I saw a man in a staff t-shirt sitting alone at a table in the very back, eating a slice of pizza. I knew he wasn't the only worker, but something about him said he knew a lot about the animatronics. Okay. Even from across the room, I could tell he was sweaty, greasy, and scrawny, which made me think he was some kind of nerd. <laughs> I excused myself to go to the bathroom, but instead I went to talk to him. Excuse me, mister. Do you work here? I do. What do you do? I play Yellow Bonnie. Oh. I was taking a break before the last show. Really? D does that mean you know how Freddy and his friends work? When I asked that question, Bro's got a weird grin on his face. Ear, revealing strangely yellow teeth. Oh hell no! He's gonna try and feed him to the animatronics, bro. What would you like to know, little one? With that, he had me hooked. I asked him all the questions I had been saving up, and he told me the answer to every one. Soon, however, it was time to go. I just had to get one more question in, Mister. How do you know so much about how they work? That's when the man leaned in and whispered to me a bombshell of a secret. I built them? You want to know something, kid? I'm the owner of this place. And by the way, you can call me Will. Oh, oh no. no. It's true. Oh, no. See you after the show. I got to go get back into the suit for now. But come back around here later and look for Yellow Body. It was Bro is William Afton. Exist. My parents wanted to go, but I convinced them to stay for the last show. Afterwards, I knew we would leave very quickly, but my mom always went to the bathroom first and left my dad to watch me. Once she was gone, I waited for him to get distracted, and then I slipped out of sight. <laughs> Not a good idea, buddy. It took him to notice I was gone. I quickly made my way to the same place from earlier and stood there for a painfully long minute, until finally... I saw Yellow Bonnie walk around the corner at the far end of the hallway. Bro is going to get fed to the animatronics by William Afton. Wha I'm telling you, watch. Over to her. I followed without even thinking. Watch. Right as I got to her, she started walking somewhere else, somewhere I never went. They didn't answer when I asked where we were going. What is it like the parts room? Eventually, we got to a employees only. Okay. Employees only. Figured. Yellow Bonnie opened the door and let me inside. As she turned on the light, my breath was taken away. Foxy was standing right in front of me. No, he no, no, no. Gone, Pirate Cove was closed for repair that day, and I was worried I wouldn't get to see Foxy at all. But suddenly, a miracle happened. Thank you so much for letting me see Foxy, Mr. Will. That's not all. I've been working on some issues with Foxy's <laughs> circuits. Come closer and I'll open them up. Oh so no. Get a better look at what makes the magic happen. 
Oh no. Turned into a dream come true. Mr. Will was able to take Foxy's chest and face off while wearing the yellow Bonnie suit, and then all the magical inner workings were revealed. Yet, all of a sudden, I had a sick, sinking feeling. The inner workings weren't magical, they were grotesque, like a mechanical jaw full of a thousand steel teeth. When I took a step back, he's gonna try and put him inside a Foxy. reached out and grabbed my hand. I managed to slip away and run for the door, but before I could open it, both of my shoulders got clamped in the vice grip of Yellow Bonnie's hands. I had no hope of escaping her grasp then. I kicked and screamed, but no one came to help me, and I was powerless. Against my struggle, he stuffed me inside of Foxy between all those horrible steel. Bro, if those spring locks go off, in by putting the pieces back on, I was trapped. Will looked me in the eyes with yellow Bonnie's face. Welcome to the family, Foxy. Try not to break down this time. He flipped a switch, and in an instant, I was toast. The pain was immense and all over my body, but it didn't last long. However, even after my heart stopped beating, I never left Foxy. I... I somehow was forced to become him, and now I spend every day stuck in Pirate Cove, watching other kids live normal, happy lives, totally unaware that I'm there and trying to desperately tell anyone about what happened to me. Although, Will has Bro. started to wonder at night, and I hear there's a new security guard working the night shift. Vanessa! Bro, so William takes the kid and puts him in the suit, killing him, turning him into Foxy. Bro, William's a demon. He's an absolute demon. Yo, story How two. How many of you can say you are true Five Nights at Freddy experts? I'm not Regardless an expert, but I'm a answer, fan. I can tell you that I sure was more of a fan than you. That's for the fact that I wasn't a normal fan. Why? I was obsessed with the game. And as you know, no obsession is healthy but I never thought mine would take me to such dark places as it took me. At that time, it was early 2015, and Five Nights at Freddy's 2 had been out for a few months. Yeah, peak. By that point, everybody had figured out the vast majority of the game's secrets. Or so, everyone thought. At the time, I was on Reddit a lot, and there were rumors that Scott, the game's creator, made a pact with the devil for the game to do well. It was said that there was a reference to this in the game but it was so well hidden that even the best data miners couldn't find it. The only way was to stumble upon it. I was only mm. 16 years old. I was really obsessed with discovering this secret. In the beginning, I did the same as everyone else. I tried different difficulties with all the animatronics until I found a secret number. But no, I had to do something else. And one night, I discovered it. And remember to take turns at the computer, don't go to sleep so late, and clean the dishes by the time we get there. Understand? Yes, Mom. Yes. Toby, you're the big brother. Take good care of your brother, okay? Dad, don't worry. <laughs> we don't do more than play with the computer and watch TV. But not too much. Remember to sleep. Remember to sleep. They're not going to sleep, don't bro. Worry, They're not going to sleep. Everything. We trust you. Take care of yourselves. That Saturday night, my parents were going to a work party. Since I was a big boy, they could leave my 12-year-old brother in charge of me. As soon as my parents left, I grabbed my notebook and the keys to my parents' room while my brother stayed in ours. Once in my parents' room, I closed the door and started playing Five Nights at Freddy's 2 from bed. I wasn't focused on winning the game. I had already done it hundreds of times. I just wanted to discover the secret. Maybe it was a combination of difficulty, maybe it was related to the mini-games, maybe it was a combination of deaths. Seconds, minutes, hours passed. This was nothing. It didn't bother me that time passed. It had been like this for months. But on Bro really wants times, it. this time it worked. With a combination of things I did, as soon as I started the third night with a certain difficulty, something strange happened. The game closed by itself. It once it opened again, the game started immediately. Everything seemed normal, but something interrupted it. My brother knocked on the door. Not many people know this, but if you press control and the letter P, you can pause your game. So I did. 
I was about to go see what my brother wanted, but something surprised me. Was my parents' room always this dark at night? No. If my brother was knocking on the door, why was there no light coming from underneath it? Because it's not your brother. It hadn't been cut off, and I could see my notebook was still charging. He was somehow transported Five. into the real Five Nights at Freddy's uh, world. On the other side, there was only silence. I decided to approach the door and slowly, slowly, I opened it. The corridor that connected to my parents' room was totally dark. Clive? Suddenly, someone also started knocking on the bathroom door. This is bedroom. weird. This is weird. Possible. Only my brother was in the house, and that bathroom was only connected to this room. What was going on? I looked for myself. You transported yourself. Anyone, but I had no signal. All the windows and curtains were closed and could not be opened. I went back to the notebook. Was this the secret level? Is this what I read on Reddit and no one had discovered? Not knowing what to do, I sat back down at the notebook and kept playing. Maybe that was the solution to get out of here. Yeah, you gotta win the night. The difficulty of the game was not very high, but I was so nervous that even the easiest thing was a problem. Had I not checked the pipeline? Was I not paying enough attention to the music box? As the game continued, I heard strange noises throughout the room. Those knocks on the door had turned into loud knocks. Those knocks sounded just like the ones in the game. The atmosphere in the room was unbearable. No, no, no. The game was about to end, but I couldn't play anymore because of my nerves. My fingers and hands were shaking. I was sweating nonstop, and every time I tried to breathe, this is not I felt good. a very intense pain in my chest. Freddy's going to come out of nowhere. Suddenly, and just before the game ended, I ran out of battery in the game. It's over. Instead of the lights going off in the game, the notebook monitor went off. My body froze. I couldn't move. The bathroom door slowly yep. opened, and I began to hear footsteps coming slowly towards me. When those footsteps reached my side, nothing else happened. I felt something breathing in front of me, but it didn't move. It was just silent. Ah! Ah! What's wrong with you? You scared me! <laughs> Clive? What, what happened? Are you out of your mind? I came in to tell you to wash your dishes and you didn't answer me. You just kept playing like a zombie. The game isn't even on high difficulty. What? The game? When I looked at the game, it was over. Apparently, I had won. What happened to you? I thought you were making a joke. No. Bro's tweaking. To me. Whatever. Do the dishes. I don't want mom to scold me because of you. That was the last time I ever played any Five Nights at Freddy's again. After that night, I tried to tell everyone what I had experienced, just as I am doing with you. I explained everything in detail. Do you know what everyone did when I told them? They called you a liar. They congratulated me. Everyone told me that I created an excellent creepypasta. No one ever believed me that I had really lived this. Not even my own brother. You know, today I don't trust anything that happened that day. I don't know if it was real. No, it was real. Was so Some, something happened. That I was hallucinating. Maybe I was going crazy. But just in case, just in case it was real, don't do what I did. Don't get so obsessed with anything. Because if what I went through was real, maybe it'll happen to you. And maybe you won't be so lucky to be able to tell the story. Yeah, I don't know how he got out of that, if I'm being completely honest. I have zero idea how he got out of that. Here we go, story Having three, the last one. At Freddy Fazbear's Pizza was not something I ever imagined doing. Not something I would do. But desperate times demand desperate measures. My name is Mike, and I heard all the rumors about this location. Hey, the now. The animatronics that moved on their own, the eerie laughter that echoed in the night, and the enigmatically disappearing night guards in the past. Despite the unsettling tales, I accepted the job because I needed the money. The manager, Mr. Smith, smiled at me <laughs> when I arrived on my first night. He led me into the security office, a dimly lit space with a single desk, no. <laughs> several monitors, Just and no. Else. Airborne was the lingering aroma of stale pizza boxes. Mr. Smith said, his voice quiet, Here's the deal, Mike. You'll be here from 12 to 6 o'clock. 
It's your responsibility to watch the cameras, ensure that the animatronics remain in their proper locations, and prevent them from getting close to the office. Trying to keep my anxiety under wraps, I responded. Got it. Mr. Smith left as the clock struck 12, leaving just the hum of the security apparatus in me. No. I took a quick look at the camera feeds and saw Bonnie the Bunny, Chica the Chicken, and Foxy the Pirate in line on the stage with Freddy Fazbear and his group of animatronic friends. No. All appearing to be lifeless. Not doing that. However, something about their icy, unblinking eyes gave me chills. Yeah. As I kept an eye on the animatronics, hours slowly passed. But as the evening wore on, things began to seem off. I saw Bonnie on camera. Lurking in the shadows of the dining area after he left the stage, I muttered to myself, trying to slow my heartbeat. Okay, Bonnie, just remain where you are. I was aware of the wandering tendencies of these animatronics, but experiencing it firsthand was another matter. Bonnie moved slowly toward the office, and I wanted him to do so. As the minutes dragged on, the wall clock appeared to be ticking even more slowly. Chica abruptly left the stage as well. But I caught a glimpse of her coming my way on a different camera. I picked up the desk phone and called Mr. Smith as panic began to well up. Bro's playing real world Five on Nights at Freddy's. He responded. He asked with a worried tone. Mike, what's going on? I stumbled. Bonnie and Chica are on the move. What do I do? <sighs> it's just a software bug, Mr. Smith said. They occasionally experience some sleeplessness at night. Just watch them and use the security doors if they get too close. They get a little restless at night. However, the unease persisted as I hung up. I only felt marginally more at ease. I changed to the lens that was capturing Foxy's pirate code. Foxy continued to stand there, peering out from behind the curtain. No, bro. You can't hide from us, Mike. You can't hide from us, Mike. Oh, hell no! I looked at the camera as my heart leaped into my Oh, body. hell no! Both Mr. Smith's voice and one of the animatronics were not the source of the voice. I checked the hallway outside the office, but nothing was there. The animatronics became more hostile as the night wore on. Freddy Fazbear was now hiding in the shadows next to the office yep. door after leaving the stage. In Waiting the distance, for you. I could hear their robotic movements and a tremulous laugh. Since the battery was getting low and the security doors consumed a lot of power, I knew I had to use them to protect myself. I had to be careful. Fifteen percent battery? Power left. Oh, you're toast, bro. I heard a soft childlike giggle as the office lights began to flicker. Even though I turned around, nothing was there. The laughter persisted, intensifying and turning ominous. I yelled, my voice shaking. Who's there? No one spoke up. Bro is so toast. Increasing volume and reverberated throughout the space. My heart was thumping in my chest as I slammed the door shut and locked it. I gave the cameras one last look and saw Freddy Fazbear's face pressed up against the glass. The power gauge of my flashlight flashed five percent. The office went what time is it? dark, and I was surrounded by laughter. What time is it? I sat in the corner and prayed that the night would come to an end. Finally. The time was 6 a.m. in the morning. You're good. And the sun started to rise. Whew, we With survived. The mechanical motion slowing. The animatronics withdrew to the stage. In eerie silence replaced the laughter as it faded away. My legs grew weak from fear as I stumbled out of the office. The entrance had Mr. Smith waiting for me. Michael, congratulations. He smiled and said, Yeah, I'm, I quit. You survived your first night. I quit. I wanted to stop right away, but I wasn't able to. I was in need of the cash. I had the unsettling impression that the horrors of that night were far from over as I left Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. There were still five more nights to go. <laughs> no. And I had no, no idea what other nightmares lay in store for me. No. There is no humanly possible way, no matter how much money I need, would I ever work out of Five Nights at Freddy's. That is that is out of the question. Hopefully you guys did go and enjoy today's video, and if you did, don't forget to drop a like on it. Comment down below what else you guys want to see on the channel. And with all of that being said, guys, my name is Chris, and of course, I will catch you guys in the next one.